Oh, all right. Hi, I'm Danielle. I am the SNAVA multiple time test taker. So I am here to support all of your multiple time test taking needs. Um, I made us a fun little uh, Google Slides to go through. So just because I would ramble. Um, but I feel you. I know your feelings. So that's the nice part of being a multiple time test taker is that we all know that feeling, right? It sucks. So let me share my screen and we can work through this. So hold on just a minute. This is the part you need to get better at. Okay. I hope you like these. I try to make it fun and not like bleh. Okay. So there are no BCBA holes allowed here, right? We don't have time for that. It doesn't matter how, how many times you took it, you pass it on the first time, you pass it on the 16th time, it doesn't matter. You, if you're gonna be an asshole, bye. We don't have time for that. Um, so there are no BCBA holes here. Uh, we are all here to support each other. So, okay. So I felt like this is really important because I actually had this conversation with Casey and Lot the other day. So they were talking like, you know, we get, oh, one month cram. I studied for a month and I passed. Just like somebody's sexy picture in their swimsuit. And they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't do anything. And you're like, bitch, you're lying. <laughs> you don't really know all the things that they did. So don't let those, oh my gosh, I only studied for one month get you down. Because let's be real. If they don't tell you, you don't know. So they may be a multiple time retester and they just not, aren't going to say it because for some reason that seems to be the stigma that oh, you, if you don't pass the first time, you just don't know it. Well, that's not true. That doesn't determine how great of a BCBA you're going to be. So just remember that, that it's social media and you're only going to see the highlights. You're not going to see all of the tears and the hours and everything that they have put into it. They're just going to be like, Oh my gosh, I did this one thing and I passed. It was so easy. We all know it's not easy. It's a whole damn book that you have to know. So remember that social media is fake. You're only getting the highlights. Like I, I told this to one of the girls I was tutoring. We don't even know if Greg Hanley took it more than once. He just didn't tell us. He may be a multiple time retester. We don't know. If he didn't tell us, we don't know. So we never know unless someone's going to tell us. So remember that. And I feel like it's my responsibility as a multiple time test taker to be like, it's okay to be a multiple time test taker. There, it, it just, it happens. It's part of it. It's part of learning. So don't get down on yourself. Okay. So there is no dumb question. Ask your questions. Ask for clarification. Ask for help. Get in a study group. Post it on Facebook. Post it on Instagram. Because I'm going to be honest. I ask questions. I ask Lauren questions. I ask Liat questions. I ask Casey questions. We are all always asking each other questions because we all need clarification. Like, uh, can you, can you uh, explain this to me again? I'm not quite sure about it. So don't be afraid to ask a question um, because you, you're trying to learn. And if you don't ask, you're not going to know. So there's no dumb question. And if you feel like you're in a situation where you can't ask a question, ask them in private. So you don't have to ask them in front of the whole group. Okay, so we all have feelings. We all didn't pass the test, right? We didn't pass the test. We're sad, we're mad, we're angry. We wanna know why, why us, why, 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 right? Here is the good news. You already have a one up on a first time test taker. You know what to expect. You know what it's like in a testing center. You know what the questions are like. You know how to pace yourself. You know what the format looks like. You already have a one up. So instead of have your feelings, I don't have a lot of feelings, but I did have feelings for this. Have a lot of, have your feelings, but know that you're already a step ahead of the game because you know what to expect going in next time so that you can better prepare. And this is that thing, right? Where it's, it is like heartbreaking, but it isn't the end, right? So we can take it again. We can take it again and again and again, as, as many times as we need to take it. This is not your terminal illness. This is not your sick kid. 
this is this is not a a life it is a life change when you pass but you know you could be in a situation where you have a job and you are able to work with kids and you're making a difference every day the only thing you're missing is the letters so just remember that you're still making a difference letters are no letters so you will get there you just have to we're gonna flip the script on how we think about it okay this is so important you have to have all of the positive vibes when you open your book I love my book. When you go to sit down to do your notes or your flashcards or however you study, you have to feed your mind with all of the positive vibes. If you sit down and you're like, oh my gosh, this sucks. I failed. I'm never going to pass. You are not in the right mindset to take the information in when you read. All you're thinking about is this sucks. This is terrible. This is taking forever. Instead of sitting down and being like, I will pass. I just have to figure out the key. I'm, I'm going to be, I'm ready to learn and get the information in. I sit down when I read my Cooper book and there's still times I'm like, does it say this? And is this, is this right? I must have missed this when I was studying. So having that positive mindset about around studying and reading your book is, is a game changer. These are my little notes that I wrote every morning for 12 weeks. I wrote that five times before I ever started. I wrote, I will pass, I will pass, I will pass. And any time I felt like I was gonna say something negative to myself, I said, no bitch, not today. We are not, we are not having any negative talk today. We are only positive. We are going to pass this test. We're gonna stick it out and we're gonna, we're gonna, it'll be fine. So no negative talk now. All the positive talk around studying and your book and your reading. Danielle, kind of like you do with Tate, your son, when you're like, no, sir. <laughs> yes, no, sir. That is not available. It is not available for you to be thinking negative. So no, ma'am, no negative thoughts, only nice things. And you can, if you come to tutoring and you try to tell me something negative about yourself, I will tell you, boop, nope, I don't got time for that. We don't do that here. So you need to start saying nice things about yourself so that you're able and ready and willing to learn. So I don't let none of that mess come into tutoring either. I'm like, mm -mm, I don't got time for that. We're here to learn. And so we're going to be positive about it. Okay. This is also super important. If you don't know how you learn, go out there and find a free test and figure out how you learn. I am a visual auditory person. That is how I best learn my information. You may be a hands-on person and you need to do your, you know, studying a different way. So go out there and figure out the best way that you can learn so that you can study that way and you can take the information in that best meets your needs. Okay, so I feel like this is sometimes my soapbox, right? So when I took it, I, they forced us to wait three months. Now you can take it in 30 days. We need to self-assess. Do you have to take it? or do you want to take it? Are you ready to take it? Or do you need to study more? If you have a job and you have time and you need to study more, then study more. Don't, don't feel like you have to take it back to back to back because remember, you only have 10 times. So you don't want to run through your 10 times and go, you didn't pass five times in a row and go, okay, I need to slow down. I thought it's eight. Hmm? I think we only have eight tries. Is it eight? I thought it was 10. Well, I now you got eight, you got less. <laughs> I wish it was 10. <laughs> no, it's eight. So you don't have to rush. And also don't let somebody force you either. Don't feel like people at work are like, when are you going to take it? When are you going to take it? Like none of your business is when I'm going to take it. You don't need to know my calendar. You don't know when I'm going to take this test because that just puts pressure on yourself. You need to keep yourself safe. So just be self-monitoring of maybe I didn't get the best score and maybe I should go two months of studying and then take my test. Or maybe you're really close and you want to do 30 days and, and take your test again. Just be mindful so that you're using all of your attempts wisely. Don't feel like you have to rush. Don't let anyone make you rush either because that's dick. Can I, can I add one thing? Yes, please. Why is that, um, and it's kind of repeating on what you say, but I know even in our tutoring meeting we were talking about the other day that, and I know I've tutored people and sometimes I've stopped them and I've said, hey, you know what? 
I really think you should delay your test. Yes. Right? Because I know people are like, oh, but I want to have the experience of taking it. Do you really want to come into contact of not necessarily, pass, like putting yourself in, like put yourself, if you don't pass, it's not the end of the world, but put yourself in a position that you can succeed. So granted, you could take the test every month, but do you want to take it every month? Or would you rather get it done and do it right at the right time? Exactly. So like, and if you're with a tutor, especially a study notes tutor, we all went over the other day, like what criteria we would tell someone to maybe wait. It's not an insult. It's just setting you up for success. So we will tell you, um, you know what? I think that maybe you should wait another month and here's a study schedule you could do and we could go over this to make sure that you are going to succeed. So it's, it's not anything on your part to just have to try rush. If your job's offering you the pay, let me tell you, BCPAs are needed that will still be there in an extra month. So don't feel that pressure because your job's forcing you. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, I'll, I will tell you, I started this process and had lots of hiccups and I am doing the exact job that I wanted. Ago. So even it doesn't, and I didn't pass the first time I passed on the fourth time. And here I am having the exact job that I wanted seven years ago. So Matt just, Matt just, real quick. Matt just listened to this. He goes, wait, can y'all fail the exam? <laughs> he goes, no way. How many times I go three. He's like, he is, he's like, he's like, no way. See, it doesn't matter. You're a good person. You're a good clinician. It doesn't matter. The test, like, again, does not define you. Yes. Okay. So write it out. Here we are. These are, this is a, I am not an artist. I am not Lauren. I am not Liat. I cannot draw, but I can use a colored pen. I can use a gel pen. I can, I can write it out like this. So write it out the best way that you can. I like to take notes on, on graph paper. You might like computer paper. You might like line paper. I don't know what you like, but find what best gets you fired up about taking your notes and take those notes and take notes while you read and take notes while you're in collective or take notes while you're doing a free class. Um, there's a lot of free stuff on the YouTube page that you could take notes on. So Buy those things that are reinforcing for you and, and just make the notes as beautiful as you can. You don't have to be an artist. Um, we'll leave the artsy stuff up to Lauren and Liat and Casey and I will just write it out with some highlighters. Okay, so I am a book champion. I am a read your Cooper book book champion. This is my arm. This is the cover of Cooper on it. Um, I got that when I passed my test. I love this book. I love getting in this book. I love every inch of it. Now, did I always love it? No, I didn't. But when I sat down and I loved what I was doing and I loved studying and I loved the process, then I fell in love with my book because it's the answers. It is the answers to your test. So when I have a hard time when somebody's like, well, I'm not going to read it. Okay, well, it's the answers. The answers are in the pages. You just have to filter that. You, you have a great resource and you even have, if you don't want, if you feel like you don't want to read it because you're not there yet, then I encourage you to read the summaries at the end of the chapters. And then when you don't necessarily know what they're talking about in the summary, then I need you to go into that section of that chapter and you need to read that section so that you can get that content and get that understanding. So read your, love your book, make love to it. It is sexy. It has all of the information that you will ever need. Not all of it, but for this test, this is it. This is, this is the meat. This is the sexiness. So sex it up. Talk nasty to it. Okay. So there's lots of free things, right? Look at these. I love, I love the, if you know the Golden Girls. So, right. So we have lots of free things. Yay. You have Cooper quizzes that you can do. You have Psychor videos. If you're like, mm, I'm not for sure about this content, you can go, we have, there's lots of free classes that you can attend. There is a ton of stuff on the YouTube page for study notes. Then you have some paid stuff. You have the collective and all of the amazing things that you can buy in the shop, right? You have mocks, you have specialty classes, you have the collective, you have videos, you have the audio task list. If you are an audio learner or you're in the car a lot, um, you can do the study notes app. 
you can do ABA wizard, you have, you can buy this other manual thing. So there's a lot of resources if you want, you know, the apps are only like, what's the sign notes app, 10 bucks? Or what is it? $10? ABA wizard is $10, sign notes app is $10, like that's $10. Sorry, I was talking. What? No, it's 20 a month, but it has two live study groups twice a week. Okay, so it's 20 a month, right? But that's like studying in your pocket, right? So you have it, you carry it with you. You do the practice questions while you're going to the bathroom. You're doing the practice questions before you get out of the car for work. You're doing the practice questions again in the bathroom at work. You are living in that app when you can't be in your book. So there's lots of things that you can do and take with you that you can't necessarily take your book with. But then there's also free stuff too, because we know that you got to be on a budget. I get it. This is a fucking expensive process. Luckily, my husband has not put all the math together or I would probably be in trouble. So, okay. You, you use your time wisely. I am an early bird. I got up at 3 a.m. and studied. So I studied from 3 to 5.30 got ready for work and went to work. Did collective at nighttime, but that was the only nighttime stuff I did. I am not a nighttime person. I can only stay up till past about 9.15 and I'm like, I'm all done. So, I mean, I even get up at 3.30 now to make sure that I get my work done and then I get ready for work. Well, I get a workout in there too. Got to get my workout in. So, I am an early bird. If you're a night owl, then use that. Stay up, do your nighttime stuff. Uh, because you're probably not an early riser. So just be mindful and use your time. There's always time in the day to get some studying in. So um, find a really good app that wakes you up. Um, I have an app, it's called Sleep Cycle. It like gently wakes you up so I can snooze seven times and I'm still up at 3.30. So um, it starts waking me up early. So find an app that helps you get up. Maybe you need to take a nap when you get home and so you can study for several hours. So just use your time wisely. There's two hours. I mean, I study for two hours, two hours every morning, and then probably four or five on um, a Saturday and Sunday because I have you little kids. You always take us to the gym with you. You what? You used to always take us to the gym with you. I did take you to the gym. I watched a lot of the videos while I was walking on the treadmill. So you, I have little kids, so I still have to mom. So I still got up at three o'clock on a Saturday and got my five hours of studying in before they got up. Or if they did get up, I finished up and then I had, I did my mom's stuff. So um, use your time. You got it. Okay. This is so important. This is you play like you practice. So this is a mental marathon. You are literally using all of your brain power for four hours, you have to dissect questions. You have to read, you have to analyze, you have to keep track of your time. You have to take breaks. You have to self monitor. When you are studying, when you are doing practice questions in the app, when you are doing mock questions, you are always self monitoring. You are always practicing. When you are reading your book, you need to be monitoring and thinking to yourself, ooh, Am I reading anymore or I'm too tired? I'm just looking at the words. Okay, well, that means I, about an hour, I need to stop and take a break. Okay, I have done 75 questions in the app and I'm not reading anymore and I've gotten eight wrong. Okay, so I know that at 65, I need to take a break. So you are always mapping out your test. So, I, okay, I know that I need to do questions in, in sets of 30. I need to uh, read questions for 45 minutes and then take a minute break. I need to always be engaged in thinking about what I am doing now is how, what I'm going to use on the test and get me ready. Because it's a mental marathon. We are, we are using every single brain cell to answer four hours worth of questions. So... Be mindful when you're studying that you are getting ready for your test. So note those things down. Okay, I only made it 45 minutes before I need to take a break because I wasn't reading the words. I did 50 questions, but when I got to um, this six, second set of, or the 60, I didn't do very well. I got a 50 on, uh, out of the questions. So I only need to do 50 questions and then take a break. So just be mindful when you start, when you stop reading, when you're um, like, you kind of like, eh, I don't care. Right, we need to make a note of that, make it on your whiteboard. This one you're practicing your whiteboard also of 
getting ready for the test, getting your brain ready, gearing yourself up because we want to make sure that we're doing these things so we have them when we're ready to go to take the test, right? So if you play like you practice, if you practice like shit, you're going to play like shit. If you practice really great and you do the things you're supposed to do, then you're going to, you're going to play great. So, okay, please, if you haven't, take a mock. Take lots of mocks if you can. If you can't, they're expensive. Maybe you take mini mocks instead of full mocks. Maybe you take one big mock and then some mini mocks because they're $10 a piece. So take them, use them as data points. Take them in the beginning and be like, oh, I got a 70 on this. Okay, now I got an 86 again. Uh, let them guide you. What part of the task list do you need to uh, review? Just just so you know, when you, it's hard, when it comes, we come to tutoring and I'm sure all of the tutors will say the same thing. Well, I took this free mock and I don't understand this question because that question is terrible. That question is not written well. It's free. They're not giving you any feedback. I get that it's free, but they're not giving you any feedback. I don't know who's checking their questions. I don't know if they're good. I don't know if they know their stuff. So when I look at a crappy question, I'm like, this is a really crappy question. I see where they're going because I write questions, but this is not a very good question. And it's not a good data point for you because you don't even know either. We don't know if what those are like or who wrote those or if they're any good. So stick to the ones that are going to give you feedback, that tell you task list sections, and then tells you that this is important, that tells you the answer, but also tells you the other, why the answers are not right. So this is why it's right and here's why it's not right. Because what you're doing there is you're also looking at, right, test taking skill. I'm gonna, oh, okay, now I understand. I did pick the wrong one and this is why. So going into it the next time, you're prepared and you know, okay, when it looks like this, I need to stay away from this answer. That's what confused me last time. So you're also practicing your whiteboard skills. That's important. You're not just using your, I, I think it's on the next slide. So practice your whiteboard skills. I think I'm gonna talk about it. Yay, here it is. So I, lo I love my whiteboard, but I'm a super visual person. So I used my whiteboard for all the positive reinforcement. Take a breath, you've got this, you're doing great, keep it up, you know your stuff. And I also use it for negative reinforcement. I wrote my, broke my questions out into 25, marked them off. Okay, there you go, mark it off, mark it off. I also broke my time out. I know I start at 240 minutes, an hour down. 180 minutes, two hours down, 120 three hours down. Okay, now I know I have 60 minutes left, right? If I'm doing a time check and I'm not letting my timer run because I don't want to look at that. I'm also doing that also. That's also counting down. You can use it to like, I only wrote certain things on there, but I also use it like an A, B, C, D. So if I needed to mark off answers because I can't do it because it's electronic, right? It's on the computer. I'm going to have to be able to mark it off on my test or on my whiteboard. So I'm going to be like, okay, not A, not B, possibly C, definitely D. Okay, and use it that way. Write notes to yourself. Um, write down those key concepts. Use, use it. It is a tool that you want to use. Don't let it just sit there and, and be wasted. If, if anything, write, you got a bitch. Take a deep breath. You know your shit. Take care of your business. Use it for something. Okay, review. Look at your notes, right? We, re we write all these notes, we spend all this time, we read all these pages. Look at your notes, go back in your notes. Decide that maybe on a Sunday, you are gonna review notes from the chapters that you read from the week before. Watch your cram videos, watch your collective videos. Get a tutor, I had a tutor. This bitch is in a <laughs> pink shirt. So I, I did, she was my tutor, I said, Hey, on Instagram, hey, do you do tutoring? She's like, well, not usually. I was like, hey, well, do you do tutoring? Because I need tutoring. She's like, mm, okay. So get a tutor. If you need a tutor, it's okay. We all need help. We just need someone to kind of tweak it so that we understand because something's missing, right? We know the content. We're just missing the piece that makes us get it. Maybe it's question dissection, which that's coming next month, yeah. right? Yeah. Tell her calendar lady, what day? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. I meant to look at it. Oh, I think it's October 18th. I th yes, I think it's in October. Yeah. yeah. Question dissection with me. But like legitimately how to break down a question. And then you can oh, use you, those yes. skills for question dissection, which is the following week. It's a twofer. 
Um, okay, use the task list. So use your task list. Go through it and be like, here's an example of this. Here's an example of this. Here's an example of this. Okay, I can't explain this concept, so I need to go back and review it. Um, use those, explain it to somebody in layman's terms. You should be able to say, okay, MOs. So I said to my dad, dad, let me explain to you MOs. And I explained to him, he goes, oh, I get it. I'm like, okay, great. Well, I guess I know MOs because I get explained to my dad who has no idea what I'm talking about half the time. So use your boyfriend, use your mom, use your kid. My daughter was able to, when I explained to her what a CMOT was, she turned around and told me an example that she saw in one of her cartoons. I was like, you're a genius. But I explained it to her in a way that she understood. Um, look for those everyday examples. If you see an everyday example, stop and say, okay, that's this. And then it goes with this. Um, just be mindful of everything that you're doing and try to label every behavioral principle and concept in your everyday life all day long, even if you have to physically stop. I was walking out of the gym one day and I was like, wait a second, I know what this is. And my sister was like, what's wrong with you? I was like, hold on a minute. And I was like, okay, what's happening? And I explained it to her and she's like, okay, well, I stopped what I was doing so that I could pull that principle out and I could, it's right there in that moment. So find those principles, you want to apply it. So remember, right? So in the test, they're all application questions. So we have to be able to take the information and apply it. We wanna be able to apply that information that we have. So just be always on your game and always looking for those behavioral principles and those concepts in your everyday life. We know you, we know you can pick out a first then, and we know that you can pick out a behavior contract and a token economy. Look for those difficult ones. Look for those, look for those compound schedules. What's a, what is a, oh, this is a concurrent, con somebody's making a choice. This is a multiple schedule because blah, 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 right? So I'll let Casey explain those in her multiple, in her compound schedule class coming. So be, be on your game and always thinking about that. Okay, this is my favorite because it's so true. From our favorite BS Skinner, right? The failure is not always a mistake. It's just simply the best we can do under the circumstances. I don't know why you didn't pass the first time. I don't know why I didn't pass the first time or the second time or the third time but I passed on the fourth time and I'm here sitting in the job that I absolutely love after seven years of thinking, oh my gosh, I'm never going to get it. Well, here you I am. With study notes? Yes, with study notes, 100% study notes. Yes, yes. So please don't quit. That's the hardest thing for me to hear is when somebody's like, I just can't do it anymore. And I'm like, but you can do it. You can do it. You just have to figure out what's not working so that you can make it work and fix it. Something is not working. So stop and look at what you're doing. And if we keep doing the same thing, it, it's not working. Stop and think, what do I need to fix? What, what, is, what is working for me and what isn't working for me? You don't have to do flashcards. I didn't do flashcards. I don't like flashcards. That's not my jam. So maybe you're doing flashcards and it's not working for you. Get rid of it. You don't have to do all the things. Maybe you only need to do a few things. So just be, just don't quit. That's my big thing. Don't quit. That's it. That's all I got. You don't feel pumped the F up after that. I don't know what's going on. I'm over here like, woo! <laughs> like going nuts. Like, it's like Tony effing Robbins. That was a 